The church react. There were some angry people who liked working components. <laughs> there were really used working components. One person. Okay. How was it? Yes. <laughs> For those who didn't see the answer was eh. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, right now, um, there's multiple web component libraries and they don't really have an agreed standard, so it'd be kind of hard for us to go with something like that. Um, personally as well, I find the, the, component, uh, the lack of a component model a bit harder to work with. It's kind of more of an imperative, like top-down data flow thing they've got going on. And the other thing is all of our components are going to be very specific for Drupal, so we don't actually care if um, our WYSIWYG editor works on WordPress or stuff like that. We're only very focused on what works with Drupal. We're not Google Maps, for example, because they have a web component. And that's really cool because you can embed a web component on another site and you'll get all the controls and the CSS and JavaScript that comes in with that. But that's a very specific application. Um, <laughs> you can turn all of Drupal into one giant web component. <laughs> I'm going to embed this on my site, maybe. But <laughs> so, after we did that, we uh, went off and we decided to build something. <laughs> we had to build a VGA into this, so unfortunately you can't see it very well. But uh, the first thing we decided to build was a submissions page, and we did that because it was quite an isolated area of Drupal. It had quite a simple data model, just logging messages, what time it happened. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we did a DB log page, and then we decided to do permissions, which you can see up here. And we found some very interesting things with missing APIs. So on the left is the permissions page. Um, in the middle, you can see the well, these are little check boxes. So these are the permissions that um, you have enabled. Now, right now, when you hit those API endpoints to Drupal, you can get the data out that says what permissions are enabled, so that's cool, we know who to create content. Um, what I can't tell you is all of those other things are grayed out, so what permissions aren't enabled, they're not really stored that way. Uh, so we have to build our own custom API endpoint to give us that data. Uh, I don't think that's going for any time soon, but we, where is it? No, okay. So if you go onto our GitHub, which will show you later, You'll see we have this big ugly admin UI support module. And inside there, we decided to start chucking all of these random little API endpoints in. Um, because as you know, going through core can be quite a long process. So we didn't want to be held up with stuff like that. So we're just throwing it in. And then later on, we might figure out how to put those into core. So we built those. That was pretty good. We validated we could build an application in JavaScript. Uh, we also experimented with progressive decoupling in the One person. Preston's just done everything. I'm going to catch up. I'm just going to keep my hand down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, progressive decoupling, if you've not tried it, um, it's where you, you basically take a Drupal block and you can embed like a little JavaScript application inside of it. So, Drupal loads its regular page and then you can load some JavaScript on top. And, have that little thing over here being more interactive. Um, the problem with that is that each little block becomes its own kind of mini JavaScript application. They're not really um, one cohesive application, and so you're mixing in lots of different unrelated bits of JavaScript. So on top of that, you're also mixing in Drupal's JavaScript, which is still sitting there being ugly and spewing stuff all over the place. So we didn't find that was very um, good to work with from a developer's point of view. And we didn't find we didn't think it would be very good to work with if you were a React developer. So one of the things we would love, or I would love, is that a React developer would be able to come to this project, they'd be able to see it, it would look really similar to how they've seen any other React project and you'd be able to get going on it really quickly. If we did it this way, then first we have to be like, okay, so this is a Drupal module, and here's some YAML files. So first you have to figure out half of Drupal in the theming system and all this stuff, um, and then you can embed your React application inside this tweak template, and then they'll probably run screaming by then. So.
So we want to make it nice and familiar to everyone. We also could take advantage. Oh, there we go. Forgot my little poo emoji. <laughs> <laughs> we also. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really bad. Bad. Um, we can't take advantage of some things that JavaScript like full JavaScript applications give us very easily. So one of those things is Ajax routine. Um, I think it's all the this year. So um, this is going to go to the podcast page. Okay, so it's going to go to the podcast page, and you can see when I click that link. The page didn't actually refresh, it just pulled in all of these little things to make the JAR requests um, on the right there. So it's actually very quick to navigate around sites so you do that, you don't have to like, pull in all the overhead of the shell of the application. I don't know if you've seen any stuff Google has been pushing with the grassy web apps. Anyone? Very cool. Yeah. So PWAs, they're not really. Um, I mean, they're obviously a thing, I was going to say they're not a thing, but they are. Um, <laughs> this is a particular way of building an application, and it's supposed to have like a, an emphasis on performance, and this is kind of one of the things that you can do. So um, they've got some really good tutorials if you want to go and check out that stuff, and it doesn't really require you to have to learn React or any stuff like that, but it can teach you these, these fundamentals. Okay, so after that, we came up with three guiding principles for us. One, we wanted to simplify. So we wanted to craft a redesigned, modern administrative experience for Drupal with the aim to make it more approachable for content authors using React to build a single page application. Two, we wanted to modernize with an S or a Z. <laughs> uh, we wanted to make the JavaScript developer experience as familiar as possible to existing developers as I mentioned. So uh, the thing we're basing our application on right now is called Create React App. Has anyone tried that? Preston? Is anyone who's not? Yeah, okay, that's cool. So if you would like to give React a spin, uh, go uh, search for Create React App. This is a Facebook project. And it kind of simplifies all the JavaScript tooling for you because that's, for me, the most difficult uh, part of getting started with these kind of projects. So. Um, they can take care of all of that. One other really nice thing for us is that we don't have to maintain all of that tooling part as well if we're still using their application. Um, so far, that's been working out really, really well for us. Uh, we had an issue quite a while ago now that was um, a dot TypeScript. And if you don't know, TypeScript is like JavaScript, it just adds um, types <laughs> to variables. <laughs> yeah, this is what it is. Um, it's really good, helps with debugging, all that stuff. Uh, and we talked about it for a bit and we decided we didn't want, we did want to add it eventually, but not necessarily um, move away from all the cool things the CRA gave us. So we put it to our side and then like, a few months later, Create React App actually added TypeScript. So all we did was upgrade and then we just got all these awesome new features and we didn't have to do anything and we don't have to maintain it. So we're very happy about that. And then the third is to embrace. So throughout, we're going to embrace the workflows, tools, and practices familiar to existing JavaScript developers with the aim to bring more of these people into the Drupal community, both as users and contributors. So we live on GitHub. Does everyone use GitHub every single day? Yeah. So one of the things that really irritates me about working on Drupal, of many, is <laughs> is that uh, I have to go into Drupal.org and do stuff, and I spend my entire working day on GitHub, and my head is just in those workflows. I'm used to looking at issues. I like being able to do lots of stuff on there. So switching over to Drupal.org for me can be kind of irritating. Um, not that Drupal.org is bad. If you spend all day on there, then I'm sure you're irritated when you have to switch over to GitHub. But most of the JavaScript community is also on GitHub. Uh, and one of the things we found is we get some really nice drive-by contributions. So people come across our repo, they see a little thing here and there, um, send us a pull request, and off they go. They're not necessarily interested in sticking around for ages, and that's totally fine. Um, we really appreciate that they were able to contribute so easily. We're also using CircleCI, uh, which um, 
triple CI, it's very similar. Uh, it just gives us a little bit more control over what we can do with our continuous integration. Uh, triple CI is very good, but can often <laughs> require uh, help of people from the DA as soon as we want to customize it because it wasn't really built for these kind of JavaScript and decoupled environments. So um, we feel bad every time we have to follow them and be like, oh, can you try and make it do this? And because we added uh, Nightwatch to core in 8.6, I think. Um, and there was lots of back and forth um, with people from the DA to try and get it running on the test block. So we just moved all of to server CI. Another tool I really love that we have is called Greenkeeper. Um, <laughs> I'm really mad and I don't keep up with this pull request as much as I should, but uh, every time it finds um, out of date things in our uh, JavaScript dependencies, it just flies by and makes a pull request, tells us that you know this old version is going to break your build. Um, so I can see I run the test for us, and someone can just come in and hit merge, and hopefully you won't end up with loads and loads of out of date uh, packages, which is really nice. But it is an equivalent of that for Drupal. Anyone know? Silence. Okay, if you should build one, I will definitely use it. So, we um, then worked on building this demo for Drupal Europe. Um, I'm going to show you the demo, and um, this is what was put into the keynote, and hopefully the sound will work. So, uh, our aim for this was to let you list and edit the content because that is basically <laughs> the most important part of Drupal. We didn't have a design at this point, so we based everything on material we uh, like, which is Google's design language, and someone implemented lots of React components in it, so we were able to just grab those and plug them in and have it not look awful, which is kind of nice. So, fingers crossed, we'll show you the demo. We've been working on modernizing Drupal's administration line. And we're really excited to show you what we've built so far. In this demo, we're using material design components and the designs created by the Drupal community aren't quite ready to be implemented yet. And currently using the new app and Yeah, what's really awesome is this playing on my laptop or not, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that'll be my only take. We've been working on modernizing Drupal's administration line, and we're really excited to show you what we've built so far. In this demo, we're using material design components and the designs created by the Drupal community aren't quite ready to be implemented yet. And currently using the new app and UI on Drupal's demo food magazine website, Mommy. It's the contact listing. Changing pages happens quickly because there's no page loader when moving to the next page. Our food magazine is open for guest recipes and it seems like there's some sand which to leave. I'll first go to the listing to only food recipes. Again, the results appear immediately because there's no separate page load. Let's select all of the stamp content completed. The confirmation dialog doesn't require a server request, and so it appears immediately. All the stamp content is deleted now. Next, let's create some new content. Let's create some new article. The content form is generated dynamically based on field configurations in the back end. So just like before, whenever changes are made to the data structure, they're immediately visible on the app and UI. Under the hood, we're currently using Schemata and Open API for generating this form. Tagging has also been improved. And you can upload multiple files simultaneously. We were able to implement this thanks to Drupal Core REST file upload endpoint, which was introduced in Drupal 8.6. We've also added auto saving and changes. If you get disrupted whilst creating or editing content, the application suggests retrieving the changes when we get back to the form. Let's navigate back to the content listing to make sure that my colleague didn't already create this article. Seems like the content wasn't created yet, so we can go ahead and create it. My changes have been retrieved, and now we can save the article. Here's a creative content. We've implemented the new UI in a way that pages can be replaced gradually. See how it fell back to seven when we navigated to an unsupported page. Yeah. 
Australian universities spam, and it is horrifying. <laughs> So meanwhile, uh, we've had designers working on figuring out what it is we should actually build. And this is some of the stuff they came to us with at Triple Europe. Um, you can see this foremost thing here on the left, saying inline and back end, and this turned out to be quite controversial. <laughs> it, like, amongst the team that were implementing it as well. Uh, there was a lot of pushing to have a Gutenberg-style editor. Um, if you don't know what Gutenberg is, it's the WordPress editor. Um, it's just come out in the WordPress 5? 5? 5? Yeah, okay, good. Um, and it's like a front page with the CMSs. <laughs> um, it, does, it does actually have like some structured content in it as well. Um, so it has this concept of blocks and the, the structure, sort of structured content that goes with blocks, you're supposed to be able to drag it all around, and then it's going to look exactly the same when you save it, of course. Uh, so that was really, really nice um, for product demos, and in my opinion, it doesn't really work so well for editors in the long run. Uh, okay, that's so <laughs> the other thing we discussed. Uh, was it, it turns out everyone used paragraphs, and people really, really love paragraphs. So, who's here using paragraphs? Like, literally everyone. Okay. <laughs> I was like doing these talks to get a good survey of how people are feeling about stuff. So, interesting. So, yeah, we argued a lot about all this stuff at Drupal Europe, and we asked people, is the demo we built actually useful for you? And everyone said no, because it doesn't have paragraphs. Or so it's not actually something we could use, which is fair enough, we can think of it differently. So at that point, we decided to try and get people who work uh, in the content strategy communities involved uh, because they work across lots of different CMSs. And they're also generally um, around the projects that are kind of earlier stage and they're figuring out all those like, content strategy requirements and whatnot. So, this is a quote from one of them that I quite enjoy. Uh, I've seen vendors revamp the app anywhere with great fanfare a lot, and you shouldn't do it, it's silly. And the reason they said that is, uh, you know, there's a reason that people use Drupal. It has a lot of unique things in its admin interface. I'm like, yeah, it kind of looks awful when you start out, but it's actually very hard to build generic solutions um, for a problem you don't know exists yet. So the idea of Drupal is we can quickly build these better interfaces depending on what your content model is. WordPress, on the other hand, has been riffing on this one blog content type for 15 years. And so they're really, really good at making a blog. And has anyone gone into a client? I don't know. And they're like, we just really like WordPress. Can we use WordPress? It happens all the time. And it, yeah, it is really easy to write blog posts. It's super nice. Interface is good. Um, but if you want to move beyond blog posts like, and you have a complex content model, I think something like Drupal is way more appropriate. But that said, um, I think it's totally okay for Drupal to not be for everybody. So I think it could be seven years ago. So anyone that comes to me and be like, I need a website, go, you should build this in Drupal. And I go, full on Drupal imagine. Look. Evangelical mode. Um, but now there's so much options out there for them. Um, I think if someone had like a flower shop, which always used to be the example, and they came to me and said they want to build a flower shop website, I would say use Squarespace. Um, you don't need to, you know, maintain a digital site. It's, it's kind of tricky, and there's maintenance overhead to that. Just go build up Squarespace. That's fine. I don't think we need to try and um, get into the same market that those kind of things are. Um, and that said, it's, it's actually very difficult to build a good editorial experience that's fundamentally much different to what we have now um, without being able to tailor it to these particular content types. But what we want to do is give you the tools so that you can build less ugly interfaces and you can build nice previews and all that stuff. The other um, major 
item that kind of came about in these WordPress arguments that actually happened a few weeks later. Um, someone from the WordPress accessibility team actually resigned. And as you know, accessibility is a big uh, thing. <laughs> it's, a bit of a, it's a big thing in Drupal. Like, we're really accessible. I think we're probably the most accessible CMS out there. Again, from the or accessibility expert in the room. Um, and does anyone work with government projects here? Yeah, a few. Yeah, awesome. So um, in the UK, I believe for government projects, uh, it has to be completely accessible for all your users. Um, Gutenberg, which is what they resigned from, um, was found to be incredibly inaccessible. Um, but they got so far in the development cycle that they were like, screw it, we're just going to release it and we can't really do anything about it now. So, WordPress is probably not appropriate for some of those kinds of projects now. It is a little bit tough because I think the guidelines say um, it has to be accessible for your users, and so there's, a, there's like a bit of debate, debate about who those users are. So, um, you can make the front end still accessible to people, but in my opinion, if the editors aren't accessible, we're freezing out people from being able to take those kind of jobs. You should be able to edit those things and should be able to do this site building. Quick, play the usual main line once more. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
HTML isn't expressive enough to describe content with nuanced relationships. And the full page really makes it worse by attempting to mask it. Editors need to understand the specific relationships in the content model and need tools to work with that in their own. So we have a reading that. So, to try and plug that kind of gap in the meantime, because we think it's going to take a really, really long time to build something that's actually useful. Um, some of the initiatives have gone off to work on 7 refresh, and it's called Claro. So, these are some of our kind of, uh, I don't know what design is, but this is our own designs. Um, we're actually going to reuse these for the JavaScript application. Um, it's the idea is just to be something that's simple and clean. Um, this is the car red. Hopefully this will work. Uh, this is an actual sign. So as you can see, it is just a lot cleaner than um, some. So hopefully I'll kind of be, oops, excuse me. Hopefully I'll be something to kind of tie this over for now. Um, <laughs> um, if you want to try that out, um, I'll give you the link at the end, but uh, just talk on Drupal.org slash project slash Claro. Um, you can grab it with the code require. For now, you need to run a couple of commands to build the JavaScript to see if that's going to shift with it. Right now, but um, yeah, it's pretty easy. It's really nice. So that should be, I think they're aiming for the next release of Drupal. But they might kill me for saying that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> true, I actually can't stuff up. <laughs> so uh, the next thing we've got um, um, in the, on the JavaScript side uh, is extension points because obviously if we can't extend anything in the app anyway, it needs to be useless because the reason that we all love Drupal so much is we can go in and add whatever we want to it. So I'm going to try and show you the demo of that. Um, so I tried to do this live demo before, and my laptop went back. Okay. So, can you see that? Okay. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the YAML file uh, that's going to hold your components. Um, it sits in your Drupal module. Right now, we're going to provide you a component that gives you uh, option buttons, um, and you have multiple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
been working on. Obviously, you need a lot more um, to complete than what Drupal does. <laughs> the problem is that Drupal does a lot, and we're a very small team, and Drupal development is still happening, and so we can't say everyone has to stop developing now, or we can work on this for two years, because that would be ridiculous. So, I think when we eventually release something, it's going to be a much smaller um, subset of like extension points than what regular Drupal will. Uh, otherwise, we just never release anything, because we'd just be constantly trying to catch up with everything that's going on. So hopefully we can make something that's actually useful for you and for your clients. So if you would like to help out, which I know you definitely do, yes, then you can come to our meetings. Um, they happen in Drupal Slack. Uh, there's a JavaScript channel and we have a meeting on Mondays. And there's an Admin UI channel, which is mostly where they're working on Claro, which is the new uh, team. I can't remember what day they have their meetings, but I'm hoping someone in the audience will they're Slack meetings, so they're all done with uh, text threads. So if you just want to hang around and read what's going on and catch up with them, you can. So don't feel that to join a meeting you have to uh, go on a video or anything like that. You can go on our GitHub and try the project out. We actually have a composer create project command, and that will download Drupal for you, install it with SQLite and uh, give you the bundled version of our admin UI. So you've got one command, it'll take like a million years to run, but at the end of it, you'll get a full Drupal site with Umami installed and our admin UI interface. And hopefully it's not broken and it'll work. So try that, let us know if it works. And then that's where the second refresh um, is going to live. So thank you very much. And do you have any questions?